if I go here and enable this terrain inputs preview collection, this is what I get. All of you who are existing terrain mixer users, I'm sure that you'll be very excited because you already know what this does. Welcome back to the world of terrain mixer. Now we have a bunch of new and exciting features and this time I'm absolutely sure that everyone will like those. Before we go into the main ones, I just want to show you something. And that is the new terrain shape that you can use, which is very useful when you want to predict what your future assets will look like. Because usually in nature, you know, like mountains and other uh, geological formations are not square shaped, you know, like we have this uh, terrain mixer template here. This is why uh, we have added this circular terrain switch. You can find it here. Then you can also use this subdivision Cutmo Clark uh, algorithm to get a smoother border. So this is very nice because if I would go here and enable a uh, texture mask like so, let's enable a preview here as well. So you see what you get, let's disable texturing. You see without the mask and with the mask. Very nice. When you create an asset from this, it will be a, a breeze to blend it with other assets in the, in the scene. Now let's move to the main feature or should I say main features because there's a lot of them. Let's go back here. I'm going to turn off this circular terrain switch and go back to the simple subdivision uh, algorithm. I can close this. If I go here and enable this terrain inputs preview collection, this is what I get. All of you who are existing terrain mixer users, I'm sure that you'll be very excited because you already know what this does. And if you're a new terrain mixer user, you're very lucky. So let's see, uh, to make this work, what I have to do, I have to enable those features here by enabling this uh, modifier. So this one, you see something already happened. So let's just open this and see what options do we have here. Not a lot, but they're very powerful. If I select this circle and press G, like it says here, select control or gizmo and press, press G to move slide, I can move this specific input. I can go here and move this input. I can move this input or height source. And same thing with this one. What you would usually do here or here, you can now do directly inside the scene, inside the 3D viewport. These circles and the smaller circles inside help you adjust the position of your height input. The smaller ones actually uh, control the position of the circular mask that is controlled by this larger one. So if I would go here and search for the input one controller mask influence, you see it here, I can adjust its influence so it's softer or sharper. You can also increase uh, mask area or decrease it and also you can invert it. So this is very, very powerful. Now I will reset this by hovering and pressing backspace. And then I can use this one to adjust blending or the mix between the input one and input two. So if we go here and if I move it left, right, you will see what happens. And it's really, really helpful to, to be able to see what happens with each of these inputs. Same story here. You see how I'm mixing input three and input four. These smaller sliders here help you switch between the high sources for input one or input two, input three, and input four. So let me just first move it all the way here so you see better. Now I can switch between high sources that define this input one. 
Same thing is true uh, for this one. Let's see. And you can apply the same action for inputs three and four. If you want to reset it, you can do it like this, of course, or you can go here and enter zero. Same thing here, zero. So 250 is a mid value and I can set this one as well to be exactly at 250 here. Now you can still play with these values here, which give you a lot more uh, control. So for example, if I want to rotate input one, I will find all the values for input one. So the first one is switch and already it's controlled by this new feature. So we won't be using this, but I can go here and let's say I can clip from the top. You see, also very nice. You can see the exact clipping happening here on this input one preview. I can also, for example, rotate it or I can mirror it on X or Y axis. The blending also works. So for example, we can blend between inputs one, two, three, four, and also between all the inputs. We can also enable the texture control to get a better perspective of what we have accomplished. We can also adjust the camera. So let's say 25 millimeters, increase the subdivision level. Let's preview it with the circular terrain shape. Nice. I think it looks neat. So of course, as I uh, said before, I can go here to the input controllers and I can play with the uh, mask influence. So now I'm adjusting the input one mask. I'll just decrease subdivision levels. Now I can also do the same for the input two mask. Like so I can of course move input one or any other if I want to. So I can do it like this. I can adjust mask area. I can invert it once again to get this sort of a dramatic look. Let's just turn off the circular terrain switch. So I can go back to the terrain mixer plus nodes workspace. And if I would go inside the uh, height sources, what I can do, I can change the height sources, for example, for input one. So I can go here and go to maybe erosion packs, which come with terrain mixer. And let's say I can go to maybe canyons and let's say maybe this one. So this is the same canyon with different erosion stages. So I'll go here and select this uh, stage one. And here I will do the same canyons and stage four. Okay. So now if I go back here, let me just disable, uh, inputs three and four by going here and move this mix slider all the way to the left side, which means that it's only one and two are active. And you can preview that here. You see that three and four are disabled. And now I can totally disable inputs two by moving the slider to the left, you see. And now we only see this canyon here. Let me just go back here and under the terrain, under the texture control, I will choose this fast shade mix. And I will increase the subdivision so we have more details. Okay. So you see that this preview is identical to this big uh, terrain as we want it. So now we can, uh, we can switch between input one high sources because we have this uh, canyon without any erosion. And if we move this slider, we'll achieve this erosion. So you see now we have this erosion going on. And now if we introduce input one again, we can combine those two. If we go back here and enable mask 
uh, for the input one. So let's increase this influence. You see what it does. And we can also move this entire input and we can also move the mask itself. Let's do a few more adjustments. Okay. If we go back to this properties menu, we can move this slider back a bit. We can even change the blending mode. And now we can maybe move this input here. So we get something like this. And if we want to make it higher, we can do that. Let's just search for input three power. And there we go. Something else that it's also new is the masker and canyonizer. Now these are not the new tools, but the way that you will use them in the future is new. If we check the old version of terrain mixer, uh, 2.3.0, you will see that those tools were accessible through the shader nodes workspace as they are now. But the difference is that we used to go here and here, and then we would adjust these values for all inputs at once. So for example, if I would plug this here, you will see, you see what happens. So I can adjust this for all uh, the inputs at once. But now if I go to this new version, you will see that they are no longer here because there are now two separate node groups. You can see them here as well, and they can control each input separately. So for example, I can start with the masker. You see, this only affects the input one, input two, input three, input four. Okay. So same thing applies for the canyonizer. We can apply it for each input separately. There we go. And both are really nice tools to break your terrain and make it more interesting. If you combine it with uh, alienizer or melter, it can get even more amazing results. So I think this is very, very interesting and powerful. Uh, hope you're going to like it and let us know what you think. Join our Discord server and let's talk there about the future of the Terrain Mixer. Cheers.